what I was thinking here is that today we could talk about holidays <laughs> that are coming mm. up. And I know we just went through some holidays. If you have any questions about maybe what you dealt with and um, if you'd like to focus on any specifics to surviving the holidays and doing some of those things, any any thoughts there if you guys like to get started and we can go from there? Um, well, I would say I love the holidays and I love it as a plant-based eater, but I've been doing it for so long and I have it dialed in. Um, but some of the big concerns that I see in some of my patients or one of them is if you're traveling to someone's house and you don't want to hurt their feelings, I feel like that's always a big thing. So we've ta I've been talking about that lately a lot with a lot of my patients and, and some of my ideas are to um, bring food, you bring your own food with you. So you can either make a bunch and share it with everyone or bring enough, at least that you have, that way you're not inconveniencing anyone and you can still kind of be low key. You can talk to whoever's hosting it in advance, kind of let them know you're doing this for health purposes. Um, and that this is important to you. So, um, so they kind of know as well what's going on. And if you're really worried about hurting someone's feelings, like grandma made your favorite cookies, just especially for you. Um, and so you feel really bad. So you take one, even though you don't want to, I would say, remember it's your health ultimately. And grandma loves you. She doesn't want to hurt you. So, um, if you, you know, it, this is time to stand up for ourselves and I've, I've had to do it too. And it was hard for me as well. I'm not, I guess I'm not that good at it, but it's important to stand up for ourselves and to, um, to let them know that no, 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 thank you this year. And, and um, this is my goal and I'm going to reach it. And so to really go for it though, to not just give in just because it hurts someone's feelings, but what about hurting your feelings, right? You're just as important as them and they don't want to hurt you either. So um, those are the tips I've been sharing with some of my patients, if that helps anyone who's traveling and going to be in that situation. But what do you guys think? I think it's so important what you just said. I appreciate it. It's a uh... You know, when you think about it, it seems that it's not the, the, the way the conception of the individual is not as, as, as difficult as it was when I started. Um, but there's still some perception and um, values that people see. And we have to, you know, you know we have to be able to uh, open up and tell people why we're doing that. Because by doing this, allowing them to learn. And, and seems that people are a little bit more open than what it was. So I think that's, that's a very, very uh, strategic discussion and important. Uh, that doesn't mean that, you know, we're not uh, talking about anything that you can eat. I've always said that for me, it didn't make anything difference because, and Jeff maybe can understand that, as an obstetrician gynecologist, I was on call most of the <laughs> holidays so for me, it didn't make much difference. Of course, maybe at the hospital, they would have a few little things, but I had a tendency, just like you mentioned, to bring my own uh, food, but it, it really didn't make much of a difference. It was not a big party. I had to be very, uh, <laughs> to recognize that I was on call and I had to be good. So no glory there. <laughs> yeah. Um, somebody asked us, I'm sorry, Jeff, real quick, to introduce ourselves. So before you speak, if you don't mind introducing yourself and for the newcomers here. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I'm Jeff Pierce. I'm a family doc uh, practicing lifestyle medicine, some obstetrics, some other things um, in, based out of Northern California, originally from Texas. Uh, and uh, uh, do you guys, how about if you guys introduce yourselves too, and then I'll chime in about my thoughts on Thanksgiving and stuff. Oh, I would think everybody knows Laurie and Chris. So I'll introduce myself. Mm -hmm. I think they knew us a little bit by now, but that's okay. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Fontaine. I am in Vermont, uh, and I uh, joined the group of plant-based telehealth about, I would say, about maybe uh, eight months to a year ago. So I'm an obstetrician gynecologist, practiced for 27 years. I'm also an exercise physiologist and uh, master in obesity and uh, also lifestyle medicine. So it was such a pleasure to be able to join this uh, amazing group to be able to share knowledge and help people like you that are listening. So... There you have it in a short little thing. And hi, I'm Chris Miller. I am based out of Colorado and um, I'm a plant-based doctor and I have been one for 10 years now and, or I guess only eight years, but I've been plant-based for 10 years now and I've been plant-based on plant-based telehealth for a little over a year. And um, 
loving it. It's the best job I've ever had. And I'm loving all of you guys and all of our patients and all the people in this community. And so um, welcome to any newcomers. And so it looks like we have Paula and Daniel and Vicki. And um, so it's awesome. So welcome. We're so glad to have you here. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori Marbus. I am a co-founder with Anthony Masiello of Plant-Based Telehealth. And we started working on this three years ago, launched in March of 2020, and we're almost two years old. And so um, we started these webinars. Chris and I were the originers, original, uh, I guess the original gangsters. And um, <laughs> that's so bad. Gangster. <laughs> Original gangster, you know that OG. They always talk about the OG. Yeah, I I'm trying see to be hip, guys. I got kids in the Good 20s. try, Lori. Good try. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, can't quite pull it off. Darn it. Um, but basically, we are all plant-based docs. We have nine docs on staff right now. We're working um, again to increase the knowledge base of just our general audience. So that's why we're doing these webinars. We are increasing our webinars to one every week, starting in January. So the second and fourth week are still going to be Thursdays at this time. The Then the first and third Fridays, we will be doing those at 11.30 a.m. Mountain Time, which is 10.30 Pacific, 1.30 Eastern. And so we're going to be trying to maybe host one of our docs. are going to be like, you know, for example, Dr. Fontaine is ob -Gin. She's got some amazing expertise with uh, women's health. We'll do that. And then we have Jeff, who also delivers babies and all that good stuff, scary stuff. And Chris is like an autoimmune <laughs> expert. And so I have a propensity for diabetes. That's what I love to work with. So lots of different things we can, um, we're going to highlight for you guys. And if you see things, feel free to message us at info at pdtelehealth.com. If you're on Facebook, if you see us on our plant-based telehealth page, please post your questions there. If we've shared this to another group, you'll need to go to the plant-based telehealth page to ask a question. Otherwise I won't see it. I am going to be, if I'm looking over, that's what I'm monitoring. So these are also available on YouTube. Um, and as we get, we're, we're hiring staff. Um, as we're moving along, these will be um, edited and then put on the website, but you can see them on Facebook, usually pretty, I mean, YouTube pretty quick. And Facebook, they're archived. So you can go through and see all of the past ones that we've done. So there's that. And so great, if we're happy to answer any questions that you may have. And um, there is everything. Let's see here. Okay. Wait, Very we have good. to go back to Dr. Pierce was going to tell oh, yes, us Dr. Pierce. holiday about. secrets. Yes, please. Well, um, I don't know if I have any any uh, secrets other than just to acknowledge how difficult the, the holidays can be and, and some things that I guess have worked for me uh, and our family. Um, two years ago, Thanksgiving, we, we had a, a small get together just with us and, and one of our plant-based friends. And, you know, that was so simple and we were, you know, everything was just kind of how we wanted it food wise. And then uh, this year, uh, we had the pleasure of joining extended family at their place. And, um, they, they're very aware of how, uh, we eat. And so, um, there was open communication about, uh, you know, what they could make for us and what we could and what we were going to bring it, you know, it's still a, it, it's, it's always a, a bit of a interesting little dance to when you're going to a function and you're the, the odd man out perhaps. Um, and, uh, and what's that like when, you know, you don't, you know, is this okay? Is, or is this one uh, vegan or not the, the plates at the table and stuff like that. And so you just, I think be communicating openly, um, uh, thinking about your own health. Uh, and um, like, you know, Chris said, you know, the only one who's going to be uh, on the table getting a procedure uh, based on what you eat is you, uh, or based on, based on what I eat is me. Um, and so as, as much as somebody loves me, uh, and have made this, this great decadent dessert for me, you know, it's okay to say, to say, no, thank you in a, in a loving way and make sure that person knows that you care for them. Uh, e even if you're not eating what they made for you. And it's been, it's a tricky time and it's a trigger for a lot of people around the holidays, right? This is the time where people in general in, in the United States, for example, just overindulge. Um, and so for people who have been really struggling with weight issues and other things, it's a, it's a tricky time, but have your support staff, uh, have your, your loved ones that you can talk to and, and find support with and you'll get through it. Yeah, I think community is a big one, right? So connecting with people who 
um, are like-minded, even if it's only online. I have multiple patients, like I'm the only one that I know, my only family. <laughs> so, you know, reaching out, it's almost like it would be like <laughs> plant-based anonymous <laughs> you, mm -hmm. know, you know, like we're, we have your supporting, like you have your text. <laughs> I'm like, I'm really tempted right now. What do I, should I do? You know, reach out to your, your, uh, your, <laughs> your, your uh, advocates, your support there. So, um, and that's kind of, you know, where we're stepping into, that's why we're here. We're trying to let you feel like you're not alone. There are professionals who work with people everywhere across this country, across the world um, to help people make better decisions. And it's just unfortunate that the easy, unhealthy decision is, is what's available to us most of the time. But if you're mindful about the process, you're thinking, what are your goals? Am I really hungry? You know, getting in touch with what true hunger is, and just understanding that again, every every decision that you make on the you know the food under the fork really makes a difference in your long term health and it's additive. So, even if you break down and you don't make it one day, you fall off the wagon, so to speak. It is not going to undo everything you've done, and don't feel guilty that you have ruined everything. I promise it'll be okay. The sun will come up tomorrow, and you can start again. It's all good. Um, so we did have some questions and first of all, um, we do, uh, Angelica asks, is there any plant-based doctors who speak Spanish in Illinois? Yes. Um, Dr. Pierce, uh, speaks Spanish, but he is not in Illinois, but we have Dr. Kim Scheuer who is. So book a point with her. You'll love her. We get some amazing feedback for all of our doctors. Um, another good question here. What would one, what should one do if despite being on a whole food plant-based Protocol, no processed food, flour, sugar, oils, et cetera, is unable to bring total cholesterol below 200. I, I'm so excited about that question. What do you guys say? What do you think? I can tell them what I'm doing, but. I mean, yeah. it's always difficult when you, when you, unless you have the chance to see uh, for maybe a few days or a week of really what, what everything that they eat. So we can uh, make sure that, you know, the definition of whole plant base is, it could be a little bit different from one individual mm -hmm. to another. So being able to look at, uh, you know, are they, are they eliminating it in oil? Are they having lots of nuts? Is there some of the element like avocado? You know, there's this important thing that, you know, so it's important for us to be able to look at uh, these elements. I'm sure there's many other things that my friends uh, will add. I have been working on a protocol for like months now, and I've been seeing really good results. So I will tell you, <laughs> all of my doctors have access to it. I'm seeing yeah. anywhere between a 15 to 30% drop in LDL. Um, what's interesting in the last three or four patients, really interesting 10 point rise in HDL, even with an LDL drop, which is kind of cool. So some things that are on there include amla powder, which is Indian gooseberry. You don't need much of that, like an eighth of a teaspoon a couple of times a day. We talk about soluble fiber. We talk about uh, ground flaxseed. We, there's berberine um, and some plant sterols and stanols and some other things and certain timing of the meal, soy products. You know, all of those things wrapped up together we can make a difference. And even with patients, and really, I'm really looking for the tough cases, the ones who haven't seen <laughs> the cholesterol budge to where we'd like to see it, especially that LDL under 100, that really should be our first goal. And so, um, yeah, make an appointment with any of our docs. They'll have straight up access to that, and they definitely can walk in. It's very, it's very straightforward to do. Like I said, we're we're happy to order labs for you. You can order all sorts of stuff for you. You can do maybe before and then after, and that's what I've been doing. And I tested it on several, probably close to thirty patients first, and then I was like, all right, no, these are these are these are good. I'm going to share with everybody. <laughs> so, and it's been revamped, and I feel like it's a pretty good one. Um, and there's a question here actually from Jack from Nashville. Um, it's, yeah. He says, if I can get to 90 LDL with diet only, should I take meds to get below 70? And I want to address that kind of tag team it off of what we yeah. already answered. And so that's a great question. Um, and it, it, Jack, we can't give you an answer. One, we're not giving medical advice right now, but um, we're just talking in general. But um, number two is um, it depends on you and your risks. So um, I would say if you were a patient of mine, I would want to risk stratify you further. So that means like a coronary artery CT scan or um, a carotid intima media thickness ultrasound, depending on um, a couple factors, which one we choose. But um, to get that and to look if you already have calcifications, if you do, then yes, we want to be more aggressive with you and get that number down. And we can use things like 
some of the supplements and um, things that Lori was talking about. Um, there's a lot that we can do from a holistic standpoint to get it down further. Um, if you don't have plaque at all, you, you may not be sticking plaque, you may not have inflammation, and you, we won't be as worried about getting the number down as aggressively. And so then we might just keep you on your whole food plant-based diet. Plus, like Elizabeth had said, we want to really fine tune your diet and see if there's any tweaks we can make there. So there's a lot that goes into it and there's a, it, we're not all the same and it's not all just based on one number. So a lot of intricacies, which are actually kind of cool um, to figure each of us out. So if you get to work with one of us, if you do, um, we'd be happy to help you figure that out a little bit better. No, I think that's great. Would either of you like to help add to that or go to the next question? Cholesterol is such a big deal, right? It's uh, um, you know related directly related to uh, coronary artery disease, heart disease, which is a major killer. The number one killer um, as far as a disease entity uh, in the United States and around the world. Um, and uh, yes, trying to get your diet, trying to get the cholesterol down, particularly the total cholesterol and the LDL, which is the bad cholesterol. Um, the, ma the majority of people can drop those numbers down in a week or two in, with a radical change in diet, right? And um, you see that in, in these 7, 15, 30-day kickstarts uh, time and time again. And it's a smaller percentage of people who, are, who don't respond so well to the diet changes that need uh, uh, this extra stuff, so like trying out some, um, some amla powder and trying some uh, plant stanols and stuff like that. It, it's not like uh, we we're not recommending people to eat a standard American diet and throw a you know a shot of uh, amla uh, after it and, mm -hmm. and everything's gonna be good. But for those people who really are sticking and like, gosh, I'm doing everything right, and why is my LDL cholesterol still 120? And um, you know that's usually if if everything is really checking off on the diet, then it's 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 familial there. It's the genetics that are working against you and the trying these extra um, tips and tricks on Lori's protocol um, can go uh, a long way. Yeah. So you really remember you're recycling, right? So even though you're not eating cholesterol, your body recycles cholesterol that you're making. And I, you know, some people are just a little bit better than others <laughs> recycling. And so yeah, some um, people don't have a receptor to excrete it actually. So they need yeah. to do that as well. So, and those are genetic things. It's not our, always yeah. our fault. Um, that truly is a genetic thing. So we can help that along. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot too, like you said, with the 90 or, you know, under 70, it really depends. Like you said, Chris, that's on family history, their personal history, inflammation, a lot of different things, previous heart attack history themselves, the heart, you know, really, really got to focus in on your individual risk. And ideally we can get that. But remember the whole, the, the idea with your health is if I had a plant-based child and was eating this way and they keep their LDL under a hundred, lifelong, they're probably going to be fine. But as you get stratified upward in this, the risk category, we need you under 70, we need you under 60, right? So the, that's because that's where it takes to <laughs> really look at the plaque that you have and stabilize that and prevent either further some type of adverse cardiac event. So just keeping those things in mind. Um, we have some other... Go ahead. Two other things. You know, when you talk about the inflammation, you got to think that it's not only diet. And there's other component that could be part of it, like stress, like sleep. So they play into the inflammation, which could potentially, you know, have an impact on these mm -hmm. uh, element of cholesterol and, you know, exercise could be excellent to increase your HDL, which basically is a vacuum cleaner of LDL. So, you know, you don't want to forget about all, oh, like, like we said, it's, it's a, a whole person, uh, not just a number. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly right. Um, so there's a few other questions here. I think someone brought up that's super helpful. Um, Linda asked about the LP little a. Well, what will anything help with that? So that's an independent risk factor for heart disease. It's genetically driven. Mom and dad either cursed you or blessed you. Y'all let you have that conversation with them. Um, but as far as looking at the LPA, medications, diet, exercise do not seem to budget. Maybe diet a little bit, maybe 10%, but it's not much. Statins can actually increase it. So it's just a mindful reminder that we have to, what you can control, we have to control. So we really want to focus on getting that overall total cholesterol, LDL down and inflammation down. So um, any, any and other I would, thoughts? I would that? add to that, Lori. So I totally yeah. agree with everything you said. And one thing is, remember, it's just one risk factor. So high blood pressure is one risk factor. High, 
um, L elevated LP, LP little a is one risk factor. So what we do, what she's implying here is you can control all the other risk factors. So those are super low. So all you have is this one thing elevated and that puts you at much lower risk than if everything's elevated, then you're really in trouble because you also have it. So control what you can control really well. And that seems to be helping people. I mean, yeah, you want that I level. Go ahead. Just the question differently. Uh, maybe uh, you can specify okay. Laurie. You know, if somebody has a, let's say a little bit higher LDL, it, it's not everybody that will do the, you know, LP little a. So are you doing it to reassure somebody and say, oh, your LDL is borderline, but the other one is low and therefore. So, yeah. So basically what I'm looking at, if I have someone who has a normal, healthy, lower cholesterol, no history of heart disease, any risk factors, I'm just doing a standard L, you know, lipid panel. But if I have someone who has questions about, you know, family history, they've had elevated cholesterol in the past, they have diabetes, hypertension, other risk factors, I'll do a more advanced lipid panel, which includes an LP little a. I will tell you, I had um, one patient who was in her seventies who had really good um, cholesterol, but she was also worried you know, about her heart health. So we did a coronary artery and calcium score. Hers was zero. Her, her total cholesterol, her LDL are nice and perfect, but her LP little a was over 600, which was the highest we could measure. Mm -hmm. And she had no evidence. Her inflammatory markers are low. She had no evidence of any heart disease. So that speaks to, even though you have this genetic risk factor and you're seeing these high numbers, extremely high numbers, because you want to be under 75, ideally, um, that has actually turned... For her, at least, that was uh, not a big deal at all. And so she exercises, she's been plant-based for many years. And so, you know, take that for granted, it's anecdotal, but I, I, it reassures me that everything you're doing in the diet is more important That's than worrying about something. That's a great example. I love mm -hmm. that case. Yeah. yeah, good for her. 600. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, um, I, I do have, I think there's some uh, interesting questions. Let me see here. Chris, this is probably be very good for you. Can you speak to how plant-based choices can impact someone who lives with autoimmune disease? Mm, I can actually speak to that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great very question. Well. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Um, so first of all, plant-based diet is, is an anti-inflammatory diet, right? And, and autoimmune diseases are all about inflammation. So we want to improve our inflammation. And so plant-based diet is sort of a given to me that we should all be on a whole food plant-based diet. Um, if we, especially if we have an autoimmune disease and, um, so it's filled with antioxidants, um, from your, your fruits, your vegetables, it's filled with the phytonutrients that help keep us healthy and reverse disease. Um, it's filled with, um, fiber. So there's been a lot of really good data in the past few years about the importance of fiber affecting our microbiome, which is the starting place of our immune system and helping us develop immune tolerance. So eating a diet rich in fiber is important. Um, and so that's number one. Number two is what you're removing. So you're removing all this pro-inflammatory food. Not only are you flooding yourself with anti-inflammatory goodness, but you're removing all the pro-inflammatory badness. So that is all the oils. This is animal meat. Oh my gosh, so much pro-inflammation there. Dairy, number one thing that has to, has to, has to go 100% is all dairy products. Um, and then all processed foods. So even plant-based processed foods can be inflammatory. So when you take all of that out and flood it with the good stuff, can't you just see your body starting to feel better? And so many autoimmune people will get better just with that alone. And then a lot, some of them, many of them will still need higher anti-inflammation and we can work with you developing a program for you. If that's the case for you, where you, you know, you need even more greens, even more omega-3s, things like this, that we check and follow, make sure your nutrient status is okay. But Yes, a plant-based diet is is great for autoimmune diseases. Perfect. Um, does uh, one of you guys like to speak to, uh, Diane asked, MRI shows 29% bone loss. Which foods are best to supply bones for density health? I'm 67. How does gluten and coffee affect bones? Well, you, you know, in the bone, you you always have to think that, uh, well, first of all, you 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 build your bone until age 30 and we all have a tendency to decrease with time. So it's very important that we do prevention. More importantly than anything, uh, prevention is, uh, you know, to eat a good diet, whole plant food based, but also doing some weight bearing exercise. Really, that Those are very, very important. And in the bone, we have, a, you know, what we call the osteoblast, big name and osteoclast. One is helping to build and the other one is, you know, kind of, not destroying, but helping to, you know, remove the uh, old uh, bone that need uh, to be replaced. 
and into this movement, uh, the, it's important to be able to add the you know, important things like vitamin D, calcium, and that all can come from your diet. This is actually well proven that what you eat and that it contains vitamin D and calcium in the whole plant-based diet is better than taking any supplement. So you will absorb it better if you take it into your diet. The vitamin D, probably the best absorption is the sun. So obviously, if you can go out and, and being exposed to the sun for about 15, 20 minutes, it's, it's an amazing way to get the vitamin D, which is important for you to absorb the calcium. But if you cannot, you know, obviously the diet is and the supplement if need to. Uh, and, um, you know, some of the elements that are higher into is the green vegetable and the, the, you know, the, some of the, you know, like soy meal or even soy. So it is a good study um, that just appeared in menopause um, with Dr. Bernard that uh, had shown that the half a cup of soybeans Cook, you know, had demonstrated that it was significantly happening with menopause. So you would think that with the time, it could eventually have an impact on to absorption and potentially osteoporosis. So hopefully, I'm <clears throat> sure other Jeff, you want to add to this or Chris? I, I love that information, Elizabeth. I you mentioned the the weight bearing exercise, and I sort of think of. Um, just like we can't make strong muscles just by taking in protein powder, we can't <laughs> make strong bone, e e though a lot of us think that, well, I'm drinking two shakes of protein powder a day. I'm sure I'm going to look like uh, Lou Ferrigno at the end of the year, right? But, uh, <laughs> or Arnold Schwarzenegger, but, um, but we can't make strong bones just by adding more calcium to our bodies. And, and, and I think the, uh, the, you know, dairy would, big dairy would love us to think that that's all that's necessary, but um, uh, based on some commercials, but, but really it is uh, having the right background of the right foods in your body, including calcium and the, the vitamin D uh, uh, hormone and, and all of these others interplaying while you are building your bone with your exercise. And, uh, you know, that is weightlifting and that is hiking and that is running and that's gardening and that's doing all sorts of things where you're putting a stress on your bones. Um, so uh, uh, all those e eating all that great stuff with a whole food plant-based diet uh, will give you all the right um, building blocks to build that bone. Chris, any other things to add? Um, I agree with them. And I just saw Clara's question and she said, can a weighted vest help? And the answer is definitely yes, it can help. Um, if you already have osteoporosis and you've had back fractures, then be careful because it can make it worse. Um, but if you haven't yet, start real slow and low. And so what a weighted vest is, it comes with these little weights, um, usually like half a pound or so, and you put them in the front and in the back and, and um, they go up to like 10, 12, 15 pounds, depending, but start real low and slow. So we're for like an hour with a small amount. And so you build your muscles safely in addition to your resistance training and, and all the other stuff that you're doing that the other two have just described, but yes, a weighted vest can definitely be helpful. And, and um, with your whole food plant-based diet, make sure you're getting enough things like the soy, like Elizabeth talked about, beans, super good for you, green leafy vegetables. They have all the vitamin K and magnesium phosphate, phosphate, phosphorus that your body, your bones need in addition to the calcium. So they're, and they're also super high in calcium. So you wanna make sure you're not deficient in any of that, but you can get a lot of that from a diverse whole food plant-based diet. Um, so hopefully that's well, and, and I'll add one more thing uh, that in the question, it was about uh, also what about coffee and what about yeah. gluten? Uh, so as, as far as gluten, definitely celiac disease is a risk factor for osteoporosis. So that's the like 1% of uh, the U.S. population has celiac disease roughly. And um, there's a incomplete, in, I mean, there's a complete intolerance to gluten and you should not have it in your diet. Um, I, I, I think in general, uh, whole grains um, containing gluten are are lovely and just fine for bones and uh, unless you know I, I don't know about some of the small percentages of the particular gluten sensitivities that, that can affect the body in subtle ways but certainly for celiac disease um, but in general if you don't have celiac disease I, I recommend people to eat um, whole, uh, whole grains and then the question about coffee I've seen that excess uh, like more than four cups a day of of coffee uh, could potentially be a bone thief can uh, can hurt with uh, bones but um, uh, I've never 
uh, personally never seen a study where drinking one or two cups of coffee is going to make you osteoporotic. I don't know what you guys think about that. No, I, I think that's good. You know, other things are high sodium diets the, that can be yeah. harmful as well. So, you know, you really want to look at the whole picture of you as a person. The key here is if you're vitamin D, you want to keep your levels above 30, which is nanograms per deciliter on the labs. There's other measurements you'd be hit above 70. So it depends on which type of lab and what's the measurement. So it'll depend. 30 is equivalent to 70 based on the actual measurement. Um, the other thing is when, uh, just a quick adding to the calcium high rich diet, to make sure where you want to be aiming is ideally 1200 milligrams daily, right? So if you can do like a my fitness pal or chronometer and log your food for a week or so and just see where you're hitting and then look for those opportunities to add more calcium rich foods. That will be helpful because that vitamin D does no good if there's no calcium in the diet to absorb it. So just think about some of the things you can be some mindful decisions that are feeding your bones. And the other thing is if you hike, you know, I wear a heavy backpack as like, hey, this is my osteo prevention uh, osteoporosis prevention uh, activity. Um, so, you know, just things like that it doesn't have to be a weighted vest. You know, if you don't want to spend the money, a backpack with a couple of cans of beans will work, you know, so, and then you can eat them afterwards. So, so there's that. Um, we do have a question about hypothyroidism. She says, I'm interested in reversing hypothyroidism. I'm understanding gluten is a good start. Um, I can feel like I can t address this speaking from someone who has hypothyroidism. Um, so I've been hypothyroid to Hashimoto's for 25 years uh, since the birth of my second child. And <clears throat> I will tell you 15 years into the diagnosis, I went to a whole food plant-based diet about 10 years ago and had significant improvement in my thyroid function. It did not completely reverse, but it certainly improved, which was really interesting. And this year I also needed to lower my dose again. So I don't know what to tell you on that. <laughs> That hasn't changed a whole lot, but something is happening. Um, so a whole food plant-based diet is key. I think gluten can be an issue for some people um, with thyroid. I eat a low gluten diet, but I don't avoid it. Like, so if there's something uh, with you know wheat in it, I don't go out of my way to avoid it, but it's not an everyday thing. So I really think it just really kind of depends on the situation. Um, the other key factor that we've seen here, we, we see trends. I do believe we are the one place in the world with the most data on plant-based eaters, thousands of patients. We have labs and the experience. You will not find anyone with more experience than this group of doctors here. And um, iodine is a really key element. So we've had folks come in really strict, you know, sugar oil, salt-free. So they're not taking an iodized salt or a good form of iodine through the day. And they're coming in iodine deficient. Their thyroid has show some dysfunction. We correct that deficiency and what do you know? They get better. So. My, my thought to you would be to make an appointment and then um, one of our docs can discuss your specifics, order some labs, which would be a 24 urine iodine collection. They can discuss that, other things as well. There's some other minerals and stuff that are important. <clears throat> and make sure that you're doing everything you can to address the thyroid. But do any of you guys have any um, additional thoughts on that? I agree with you on that. And um, remember, stress also plays a big role. So um, stress causes hypothyroid. It actually suppresses the thyroid. It's part of the function of, so um, so making sure that you control your stress with stress management activities daily and exercise also affects it. Um, so those are two other lifestyle factors um, that I would bring up in addition to all the dietary, whole food plant-based diet is so good for it. And like Lori said, gluten definitely affects some people. We can help some people, um, especially if they have Hashimoto's the autoimmune um, hypothyroid, but not everyone, not everybody is susceptible to it. So it's worth a try or checking or even doing labs um, and seeing if you have a susceptibility to it um, before you necessarily take it out. The hypothyroidism is, I'm sorry, Jeff, I won't be too long. Hypothyroidism is, is very, very common too. So, you know, Laurie said she had, I have it. It's a family thing for us where I think in uh, eight people were four, four of us in the wow. family, hypothyroidism. So, you know, do, do your best to uh, eat well. And a little bit of uh, me when uh, evaluate some uh, zinc deficiencies. So, you, you know, it does happen with uh, hypothyroidism. You're going to see that. So we have to evaluate other element to make sure, uh, you know, that everything is uh, consistent. And, and, and also, uh, I know that you probably are all fully aware, the, the, the four of us, but, you know, the evaluation of hypothyroidism, you know, we tend to evaluate what we consider being the TSH, and then we realize that, well, the normal values are a little bit 
they're not as uh, precise as they used to. We got to be careful with that. So hopefully, uh, you know, when you come to see us, we'll be able to um, help you. And you want to be careful too, because you don't want to over uh, take your medication because hyperthyroidism can affect your bone health as well. So like, you know, she's mentioning, we really got to be mindful of where you are in that TSH for T4. Some people take... Um, thyroid supplements and they'll have like bovine ground up thyroid and they become hyperthyroid. There's some, so just be very careful about supplements and stuff. That's, that's where it's helpful to have someone who looks at a whole food plant-based diet or supplement thoughtful, I would say responsible. Um, yeah. So we want to be, you know, supplements have their place, but only certain ones, not across the board. Oh, try this. Oh, try this. Like I've had patients come in with spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month. Oh, on for sure. Supplements. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, go ahead, Jeff. One that ties in with that very nicely. If you are going to, if you're thinking about a, a spice as a supplement, um, that's very inexpensive is this nigella sativa, sometimes called black cumin. Um, but be careful with that because some people might give you a different kind of, uh, black cumin, ni nigella sativa, um, and it, it's uh, on nutritionfacts.org if you want to see Michael Greger talking about it. But it was a randomized control trial, double blind, with a half a teaspoon of nigella per day, um, which is just mm -hmm. pennies, for eight weeks. And it led mm -hmm. to weight loss and it led to lowering your LDL. And then they just sort of stumbled upon the fact that it also lowered your TSH, uh, which was a sign of hypothyroid getting better and it lowered antithyroid um, antibodies as well. And so uh, that is something that could, in addition to all the other changes uh, with stress and diet, um, uh, something as simple as adding a half a teaspoon. How, how tasty spice is that? I love it. Because we, we make a lot of Indian, we make a lot of Indian mm. food. Um, and, uh, so it's a, it's a common spice in, in Indian cooking. And so it tastes like so cumin if you like it, I think. I mean, a little strong. yeah, but to do a straight up, uh, half teaspoon by itself, oh, yeah. is, for no, me, it was a little much, but I do have it. I grind it up and then just yeah. Well, that's what you recommend. Dr. Gregor grinds it up and puts it in like a pepper, salt, pepper shaker. And so that's what I did. And it's not bad on food a little bit at a time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's, and Kip that's just a good shared point. the link. Thank you, Kip, for that. So if anyone wants to see what Jeff is referring to, that's great. Kip, oh, he's, he's like our, yeah, he's, he's, like our he's like our person. He's like our little like support group. Yes. <laughs> Always. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just making sure we're getting close to being running out. Of time. I just want to see if there's anything here that would be quick to answer. Um, yes, resistance bands for uh, strengthening, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Calisthenics, whatever you want to do. Um, Kim did ask, uh, do you, does an initial appointment with one of you um, advise patients on supplements? And she's new to the plant-based diet. Absolutely, 100%. We would discuss that with you, determine what you need and not need. Many times I'm telling people, we're stopping everything today. This is what you're going to do. <laughs> like, okay. Um, but uh, any other thing, final thoughts before we go? And we'll be back in the new year with the, in the first in the first week, it'll be a Friday, but we'll, we'll have those links on the Facebook page. I'll be updating those shortly, but anybody else with final thoughts? No, I guess uh, it's amazing to see that there's newcomer. So people are starting to be, uh, I, I feel that this, there's this change, you know, we've been at it for many years. <laughs> I'm going to tell Jeff, it's like a labor curve. You know, it's kind of flat and then eventually you take the active phase of labor. I think we're getting a little bit into this <laughs> for people. So welcome everybody and please bring more people so we can uh, have a, a, a bigger discussion. It's fine. Absolutely. And I want to say thank you all for being here and have a great holiday. I hope everyone is plant-based and loving it for this holidays and comes back even healthier in 2022. Absolutely. Same. All right. Excellent. And you guys have a great holiday season. We will see you in the new year. Like I said, we will be occurring weekly, either Thursday or Friday. Just look for those links. You can also sign up for the webinars on our face on our website, which is www.plantbasedtelehealth.com. That's where you can also schedule appointments. If you're international, we're happy to see you as well. Look under information. It talks to you about 
different things and what we can do for you. And um, feel free to email or call us. We have uh, support staff available to you at any time. So thanks guys. And we will see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Happy holidays. Bye.